That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about One Day as a Lion, the seventh film directed by John Swab, which is being released uh, in limited theatrical, uh, courtesy of Lionsgate, on April 4th, 2023, just days before it will be available to stream, apparently, on April 7th, 2023. Do you know this director's other films? I came this close to ro- watching 2021's Ida Red, which featured Melissa Leo, but I didn't. Uh, he likes to work with Frank Grillo. I think this is their third feature together after Body Brokers and a film called Little Dixie, which already came out this year. And I think they might ha- have another project in the works. So Mr. Swab is just cranking him out there. Uh, notably, this is the fourth screenplay written by Scott Kahn, uh, who does Star. I thought this movie was pretty good. It was much better than I was expecting. Um, It almost could have been great. Almost. It's like a comedic crime drama. Yeah. Or a crime dramedy, maybe. Crime crime (laughs) dramedy. Yeah, there you go. It's set in modern times. Scott Kahn plays a guy living, I believe, in Oklahoma somewhere. And and he's, he's kind of into illegal activity, but... He's presented like he's still a good guy, just caught up in some nonsense. And we see on this day, he is working for this drug lord played by Frank Grillo. And his task for the day is to go kill J.K. Simmons, who owes Frank Grillo $100,000. So Scott goes to the diner where J.K. is. And it's like he gets cold feet. A melee ensues. And the restaurant owner ends up getting shot while J.K. Simmons is able to escape. But Scott freaks out because there's a waitress, who I think it's like her first day on the job, who witnessed everything, so he kidnaps her. But very quickly it turns into like... I don't want want to use... For some reason, Bringing Up Baby came into my head, but I know this movie's not at that level. But they have a, a fun little dynamic where she... She's not threatened by him because she recognizes that he's not like a monster. He's just desperate to help his son um, who is in juvenile detention. And this final job is going to provide him with the money to pay for a lawyer. But now that that's been uh, foiled, he's trying to figure out a way to get cash. Well, this waitress, whose name is Lola? Lola Brisky, played by Marianne... Is it Bredon? Lola's mom, played by Virginia Madsen, is rich and... She comes up with the bright idea that if she, Lola, and Scott get married, that will satisfy her mom's terms for her will, that she will inherit everything if she's married. But she thinks, oh, maybe if I tell her I'm getting married, she'll advance me the money. So it's ridiculous. Of course, the mom says no, but she does agree to give Scott money for the lawyer. Mm -hmm. So Scott has this one night to find a lawyer because his kid's hearing is in the morning. But the mom ends up dying before she can give the money. So I think the best scene in the film is Scott shows up to his kid's hearing pretending to be his lawyer, not his dad. And Lola pretends to be this boy's mother. Mm -hmm. And they're able to get the boy out of juvenile detention. Well, because that scene also utilizes the fact that Lola has come home with her... Uh, tail between her legs because she tried setting up an acting school in Costa Rica which uh, went under uh, which she's indebted to her mother for and so she's able to perform for the judge. So while all this is happening Frank Grillo and his men go to J.K. Simmons house to basically kill him because he didn't pay the money and then there's like a shootout everyone dies except Frank Grillo and then Frank Grillo's right hand man is sent to go find Scott and he does, and he's with Lola and his kid, and then it looks like maybe he'll kill Scott, but he has a change of heart and lets him go. And that's the end of the movie. <sighs> well, he, that was Dom, played by George Carroll, who is his old They're kind of like friends, so that's why he lets him go. But mm-hmm. I thought, what, what did you think? The title, for one, is kind of strangely forgettable. Uh, I But, uh, oh, again, I was amused because I was... Cons- there was a film we reviewed a couple years ago during the pandemic called Arkansas, and I, th- there's just so many films Who's kind in of... that? A whole bunch of people, but oh. the, the kid from Hot Tub Time Machine, whose name I'm forgetting, was oh. one of the people in that. Uh, but I, I was thinking it would be kind of construed and, and feel 
like that may be instantly forgettable. And while this still might be forgettable, it does have some interesting uh, character work. Uh, I was quite entertained by Virginia Madsen. Uh, her character name is Valerie Brisky, which sounds like that French actress's name, Valerie Caprisky. Uh, anyway, I liked her and her little crab legs and cigarettes. And Well, her character's nickname is Black Widow yeah. because she has money because all she has four ex-husbands who all died within a year of marrying her and she received their money. But she's only really in like one kind of like longish uh, segment and the entire time she's fully painted with all of her hair and rollers. Which reminded me kind of a drop dead gorgeous as well, but... I thought she was a lot of fun. She was as well, and I liked Taryn Manning, who's this bedraggled kind of like trailer park Taryn ex. Manning plays the mom of Scott's kid, mm -hmm. but she and Scott are not on good terms. I also agree, I thought she was fun. Um, and it just feels like J.K. Simmons and Frank Grillo are kind of these, are tacked on in ways that don't really add anything, except we have to have the shootout resolution, climax and resolution. And I, I don't know, those, I feel like there's a more interesting story that you could have trimmed the fat. Well, you said earlier that it would have been better without those two, and I agree. I wish that we would have excised Frank Grillo and J.K. Simmons' plot line of like the, this drug money that they need. And spend more time with Virginia Madsen and Taryn Manning. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not what happened. And mind the weirdness and dysfunction of those relationships. But, but you know, to Scott Kahn, who I, I guess I haven't really seen in a minute, you know, has, has made a, done a good job of kind of creating his own vehicles. And that's very much what this feels like. It's, you know, because his father just recently passed away and it's inter James he, Conn. Yeah, he doesn't so much look like James Conn, but every it's like watching Henry Fonda. It's like every now and then it's like, "Oh, you remind me of your the, there's the way you say something, it's just like that you have their mannerisms, which is so interesting to me." But. I also like Lola. When we first meet her, she's at the diner working. It's like I think it's her first day. She's really disgruntled. Her boss is kind of an asshole towards her, and so is J.K. Simmons, the customer. So when she goes to retrieve his coffee, she spits in it. I thought that was funny. And when Scott shows up to do the job, he puts on a costume, which is basically like a shitty party city mustache <laughs> but i thought he had a cute little energy to him he did he kind of had a he was a little looney tunes yeah but it worked and then it's also clear that he wants to show off his body i mean he's in very nice shape and so for the first act of the movie he, his shirt won't button we get a scene where he is in the hotel room in his tidy whities when frank grillo's right hand man comes to like confront him i thought that was a fun scene mm -hmm. <laughs> because scott's like yelling at him while he's in his little underwear in this hotel room and he tells him you're nothing but an errand boy ho and then they get into a fight so it had a nice little comedic energy that worked well the dialogue does crackle very well so i think khan is good at that i think what's kind of ruinous towards the film though is the score uh by david sardi who also sc who scored a film that we both recently liked a lot called a lot of nothing as well as in the this film, it films. feels generic and excessive. It's generic, but in that quiet way that feels like we had to have... It's almost like elevator music in these uh, scenes that are a segue to something else. Like, we can't not have some kind of extra energy going on. It's like, it doesn't need that. I also like the... So, uh, there is the attorney who Scott tries to hire is named Kenny Walsh. Mm -hmm. And we see a commercial for his law firm. And then we actually get to meet him. And he talks... He refers to himself in the third person. I thought that was funny. I know, because uh, Scott Kahn's character's name is Jackie Jackie Powers. He's like, wait, so who are you? Yeah. <laughs> Making sure. Um, I did think the kid who's in juvenile detention. He Billy. Was, he was kind of a brat, and I kind of wanted him to stay in juvenile detention. <laughs> but still, he didn't really do anything about that. No, he that. didn't. Um, my last note is... For people who watch this movie, I wonder if they get gay vibes from J.K. Simmons' character. There's something odd going on There's there. There's something weird because his house, he has all these like younger guys um, who are in various states of undress. Basically shirtless, but they're just hanging out shirtless. And yeah, I, it's not explicit. but No, but it's interesting. It's, it's interesting. Why, why are they there? But I found it amusing. Just ready there to die for him. And they do. Mm -hmm. What would you give this movie? Two and a half. I would give it two and a half out of five. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye.